Hi guys, your favorite cripple here. So today, um, you've seen the little videos. Um, we got a lot accomplished at the Mayo Clinic. We were able to move the rheumatology appointment up so um, I can get a consult and some tests done. Um, I don't think it's rheumatology, I don't think it's autoimmune anymore just because of all the neurological symptoms and the big huge cyst on my brain. Um, but just to cover those bases while we're here, might as well. Um, you know, whenever I get back to Louisville, I'm going to have to pay a copay anytime I go to the rheumatologist. So I don't have to pay a copay while I'm here. So I might as well go ahead and get some done as much as much as possible. So um, we're going to do um, that a little bit before and after my lumbar puncture. And I'm going to try and squeeze as much in as we can before we leave. Um, so we actually might be leaving later on in the evening. Um, later than we planned. But um, if it gets more testing done, then great. I'm a little ticked off that they couldn't get me a second neurological um, uh, consultation. Because I felt like I was cheated the first time. And I even mentioned to them that um, when I mentioned to the lady, you know, what, what happened during the consult and everything, you know, how he treated me and everything, she didn't even say like, oh, wow, I'm so sorry or anything like that. Like, she didn't seem surprised. So I'm sure it's not the first time it happened. So I'll definitely be contacting somebody about that. And I'll definitely be rating him on health grades and, and everything. Um, because I, he needs to not get away with this. Um, because, you know, there could have been other tests done um, that probably could have been more um, helpful. I don't think the sweat box was a helpful test. Seeing, seeing where I sweat, I don't think that that helps. Um, I, I think he went a different way with things, you know, and then he wanted to waste even more time by sending me to pain management because he thought I was going to withdraw. Um, because somebody told me at, at their office not to take my medication 24 hours. Well, if you're on pain medication and you are on muscle relaxers because you're in pain and because you have muscle spasms constantly, you know, it's not like I... I every now and then have muscle spasms or anything. No, I take, I take Flexeril three times a day and I take Baclofen twice a day. And then I take my hydrocodone up to three times a day. So that tells you how much pain I'm in and how frequent my spasm, my muscle spasms and contractions are. So it's not like it's like just something that happens every now and then. It's, it's constant. It doesn't ever let up. Um, you know, I don't have the con the contractions constantly, but the spasms are constant. Even with the medication, I still have spasms. They're not near as bad, and they don't hurt as bad. But I still have them. They're just tolerable. The medication makes everything tolerable. Um, it doesn't make it go away, or the pain will go away anyway, by any means. But it makes it tolerable. And he acted like I was going through withdrawal. No, I'm in pain and I'm spasming. Give me a minute to stand up. That's just what I was saying. And he acted like I need to go through pain management. Um, when I called the lady this morning to, to cancel my pain management, I told her, I said, um, I can't go to another pain management um, because then I'll lose my pain management back home. I said, it seems kind of silly to go to one day of pain management here and lose my pain management at home. And she goes, oh, well, yeah, definitely. That doesn't make any sense at all. And she said, I wonder why he scheduled you for that. I said, because he wouldn't let me say no. I said, he wouldn't listen to a word I said. And anything I said, he said the opposite of. I said, I really, I said, that's another reason why I was calling is because I wanted another consult because I really felt cheated out of a consultation because 
he didn't listen to anything I said at all. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm not going to go into that rant again because I've ranted in almost every video about how he treated me. But, I mean, whenever I explain this to her, I mean, she didn't seem surprised. So, obviously, this isn't the first time she's heard of it. So, um, anyways, they said that they have to go through this process of emailing the doctors and asking them um, if there can be a second consult. And I asked them if they could do that. And, I, and she said, well, the problem is, is it takes day. It's a, it's a, it's a lengthy, 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 sounds like it should have another L on there. It's a long process, um, that can take days. Um, and I don't have days, so I'm just going to have to wait until I see my neurologist back home. So, um, it's just going to have to wait. Um, but I did get, did get to, um, get my phone with the rheumatologist. Um, so that worked out. Um, I didn't get to do my lumbar puncture today like I wanted to. Um, but it's, um, still scheduled for tomorrow. Um, they wanted me to wait in the lobby, <laughs> um, to be put on the wait list. Um, I'm, I'm not sitting in the lobby all day for an appointment that I may or may not get. Um, so I just kept my reg my regular appointment, my original appointment. And um, we're just going to schedule my rheumatology tests around that. And then um, probably I'm gonna, after my lumbar puncture, I'm going to ask them if maybe I can sleep for an hour or two. And then we're going to head home and... If I need to, I'll stop at a rest stop and just sleep for an hour or two. That's what I did when we drove home from Florida. Um, I stopped at a gas station, and Andrew just played on his phone for a little bit. And I just slept for an hour, hour or two, and uh, then I was ready to hit the road. So um, <laughs> my main concern is just driving back through Iowa because it's... Um, it's as bad as driving through Alabama. Like it's, it feels like it takes for freaking ever. Um, maybe it won't be as bad this time because um, I know what to expect. Like uh, now, whenever I drive through Alabama, when we go to Florida, I kind of know what to expect, so it doesn't seem as long. Um, it still seems long. It still seems like it takes forever, but it doesn't seem as long. So now that I've driven through Iowa, I how to know what to expect, so hopefully it won't seem as long um, as it did when we <laughs> were on our way here, because I thought we were never going to get through that freaking state, because um, we had to drive west into it and then north, so I mean, it was, yeah, it was a pretty long trip into it. Um, the, um, another part um, of today is we came home and after we stopped at Denny's, and of course I got my French toast, <laughs> and um, my last French toast, because the Denny's back home sucks, and we are, we're, we're out of money, so we won't be stopping again. Um, um, we got back here, and I immediately changed to my bathing suit, um, Last night, I, I had another muscle attack, hopefully as it will stop. And today, as I mentioned in another video, I, I can't hardly use my legs at all. Um, I've had to be transferred um, pretty much to everything, the car, the bed, everything. Um, so I, I wanted to go to the hot tub to see if that would help. Um, and it did, but unfortunately, I fell asleep <laughs> in... Um, waiting on mom. She was trying to change and, um, get a few things ready. Um, she was trying to make Megan some appointments before they closed and she was trying to get the laundry together so she could go ahead and start that. So while we were down there, it could be washing and everything. And I, I was just so tired from just being worn out and all the medication I was on. I, I nodded off and she wanted to let me sleep for a little bit. So um, when I got up, we, we went down to the hot tub. Well, we were about 15, 20 minutes late getting our laundry out. 
but we didn't think it was such a big deal because we're not supposed to, you're not supposed to start any laundry after 10 o'clock. Well, it was 10 o'clock by the time our laundry would have gotten done. Hang on just a second. Sorry. My mouth is so dry. Um, it, it would have been after 10 o'clock by the time my laundry got done to go into the dryer. So, I mean, she wasn't in that big of a hurry that, and it took a little bit for me to get in the chair and ready to go downstairs. So, we go down there, and somebody moved our laundry into the dryer. Now, y'all know in Indiana that shit don't flip. You don't touch somebody else's laundry. You just don't. And we told the front desk person, you know, somebody moved our laundry and washed theirs. And there was a, a pink pair of underwear in there that I, we thought were mine. Um, it turned out not to be, <laughs> which was funny. Um... So we made a big hullabaloo, but it was, but the point still stands that they shouldn't have touched our laundry. If they wouldn't have touched our laundry, then we wouldn't have gone through theirs and thought that that was my underwear. Um, they, they shouldn't have touched our laundry. And the front desk person, she was like, well, maybe next time just set an alarm for, you know, how long the laundry, no, no, you don't touch somebody else's laundry. It doesn't matter if somebody leaves it sitting there for three hours. You go to the front desk and you complain. And then when that person comes to get their laundry, that front desk person goes to that person and says, Hey, next time you do laundry, make sure you get it within a timely manner. And again, we were only about 15, maybe 20 minutes late getting out of the dryer. And again, they were not supposed to start laundry because it was after 10 o'clock. So... Either way, both ways, we were in the right. So, it they shouldn't have touched our fucking laundry. You, you just don't touch other people's laundry. That's just, you don't touch other people's clothes. Um, and mom's new clothes were in there. I mean, you just don't touch other people's clothes. I mean, that's just disrespectful. And when they switch shifts, the other guy that works here, Gabriel, he's been really nice. He's a little, he's one that's kind of, um, ditzy, but he's the one that's been really nice. Um, we met him the first night that we were here. He's the one that helped us up. I mean, he carried all of our luggage up. I mean, he carried the whole, um, the whole cart up and then the rest of the luggage up. I mean, like ran it up, but he's the one I was telling you about that didn't check the lights and everything. But, I mean, he's been really nice. I mean, anytime he sees us, he's, at, he's asking us, can I help you with something? Is there anything I can do? If he sees us going outside, he, like, runs to the door to open it for us. Like, I mean, he's just, he's super nice. He, um, um, the lady, before she left, she was going in there to close up the pool area. And we stayed a few minutes late just because we were trying to dry off. And, um, she kind of acted a little bitchy because we were trying to get out, and of course, I mean, it takes me a few minutes to get out, but we were only in there 15 minutes, um, and I mean, it just takes me a few minutes to get out, when he came in there, you know, he asked me, do you need help or anything, I said, no, my mom just went into the bathroom to dry off, and I said, I think I've got it, and he said, okay, I said, I'm sorry, we're trying to hurry up and get out, he said, oh, no worries, no problem, and he said, you know, even if y'all wanted to stay in for a few more minutes, I don't, I don't care. And I said, oh, well, I appreciate it, but, you know, my pulse is starting to go up, so we had to get out anyways. She made it a point to slam the door yeah. twice. Yeah, she made it a point to slam the door twice when she was in there. Even though she we came back, there at 20 till she came back through twice to, to, to slam the door. And we went in there 20 to 11. It doesn't close to 11. We set the timer it, the timer goes up to 15 minutes. So we were in there for 15 minutes, which gave, gave us five minutes to get in and out. 
So we were only a few minutes late getting out, and that was just us drying off so we don't get water all over the hotel floor. And I mean, and but he came in, and he was like, do you need any help? And, you know, and he's sitting there talking to us, and we were telling him about the laundry. We were telling him about the handicap uh, parking incident and everything. And he was like, well, I'm really sorry, guys. And I'm like, well, there's nothing you could have done about it. You weren't working here. You know, you weren't working that night. You weren't working tonight. And I was like, there's nothing you can do about it. And he's like, yeah, but still, you know, that's disrespectful and everything. And when mom mentioned something about, you know, um, where we're from, you, you just don't touch somebody else's laundry. That's just rude. He was like, well, it's disrespectful. Like, wow, yeah, he gets it. The other woman, she didn't get it. She was like, oh, maybe you should just set an alarm. No, it's disrespectful. You don't touch other people's fucking laundry. You don't touch people's clothes. I mean, if they would have waited a few more minutes, we would have been down there to switch it. I mean, it's just the fucking principle of it. You don't touch other people's clothes. I'm sorry that the hotel only has one washer on my dryer. That's not our fault. Don't touch my fucking clothes. Because then I have to question whether they took it out mid-wash. You know, because we were only 15 minutes late getting down there. And their clothes were already done washing when we got down there. So that makes me wonder if our clothes were even fucking finished washing when they took our clothes out. They smell clean. I mean, they may, may have finished washing. But now I don't know if they finished rinsing, if they finished spinning, or what. So we don't know now. Like, because there's no way they had time... To finish washing a whole load. There's no way they were left down there that long. Because mom had just been down there to check on. And then came up to get me. And then we went down there. So I mean. There's no way they had time to finish a whole load of laundry. So that makes me question whether our clothes even were fully done when they took them out. That, pissed, that, that alone pisses me off. So then we told them, you know, look, you know, we let go of the whole handicap thing last night when we should have called the police. Because this morning, guess what? The guy that didn't want to come down and produce his parking his parking pass for his handicap parking placard, he was parked in a regular parking spot this morning and wasn't parked in the handicap parking spot. Hmm. I wonder why. Because he doesn't have one. And he still doesn't have it hanging up in his mirror. I wonder why. Because he doesn't have one. And he was too lazy to come down and move his fucking car because he was illegally parked. And we should have called the police last night like we wanted to. And and we told we told that lady tonight, we're not letting shit go anymore. We've been disrespected. The hotel staff themselves have been disrespected. And they've let it go. This whole This whole time we've been here... The hotel staff themselves have been disrespected by the hotel guests. And this is what we're telling Gabriel. We're like, they've been disrespecting you all since we've been here. And the hotel staff have not done anything about it. And they're disrespecting us as guests. And we're done. We're done taking it. No, I'm done. This is our last night here. And I'm, I'm fucking done. I, I, don't, I don't even care. Uh, I'm going to speak. And both of us are gonna speak our minds. You piss us off. We're we're gonna fucking tell you because I'm 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 done. I'm done fucking taking it. You only take so much. I mean, it's just it's fucking ridiculous. It just really is. You know, and mom went down um, cause she already had a bathing suit on. I guess cause I'd uh, I'd fallen asleep. And she had already had a bathing suit on. She had a pair of shorts and a t-shirt on. Because she was getting ready to take me down. And I'd fallen asleep. And she went down to start the clothes. And what was it they said? Did you Do you live here or something? Or? Oh, one of the little boys that was with, I'm guessing his father, said, do you live here? But not directing the question towards me. As in, do you live here? Yeah, like... No, I was we're, doing laundry and I was dressed in my t-shirt, shorts, and a bathing suit under it. Yeah, no, we're staying here. In flip-flops. 
we're staying here. I had like, shoes on. These parents here do not keep, teach their kids any <laughs> respect. Like, you don't just speak your mind like that. I mean, that's just disrespectful. Like, there, there's a time and a place to, to say shit. Like, when I was a kid, if I had a question about somebody, I would wait till we walked away, and then I'd ask my mom about that person. Like, just out of respect. I mean, my son even knows to do that. I mean, it's just out of respect. Um, and these kids here, especially these kids over this weekend, had no respect for anything or anyone, not even the hotel staff here. And you could tell that the staff, the guy was really nice, but he was too nice. He was letting them party in the lobby and you could tell he was getting annoyed by it. And he wouldn't say anything. And I'm like, Do you work here? Tell them they need to they need to leave. It's it's quiet time and they need to leave the lobby. It's it's that simple. And you need to phone that guy and tell him, look, either you produce your tag, move your car, or I call the call the tow company. It's that simple. Hello? Oh my god, I cannot wait. I'm sorry. Yeah, anybody who lives in Minnesota watching this that gets offended, but I cannot wait to get out of this fucking state. Oh my god. It is killing us to be in this fucking state. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Oh my god. This state is killing us. These people have no common sense. They have no gall. They have no respect. They have no respect. And the people who do have respect have no balls whatsoever to do anything. Like, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's just, oh my god. But anyways. So, yeah. I'm in a lot of pain today. And my legs don't want to work. The hot tub helped a little bit. Um, and then I took a hot shower. And I can walk a little better now, but now my back's starting, that's why I'm moving around. My back's starting to hurt really bad. Actually. I just almost threw up in my mouth, actually, because it started hurting really bad. Like, I'm nauseous from it. Um, we have a cell phone. It's the Odestron in my, or the Odestron or something. Odestron. Yeah. It's in the mesh bag in my purse. Um, so we're packing tonight and we're going ahead and putting shit in the truck because, um, we're going to eat breakfast and we're going to go ahead and check out, um, before we go to the Mayo Clinic, um, in the morning. And that way we can spend the day at the Mayo Clinic and then leave <laughs> and just get the fuck out of Dodge, like, we are so ready to leave here, like, again, I'm not generalizing, it may not be all people here, but for, but everybody so far that we have met, if you're really fucking nice, then you either have no common sense, or you have no balls, and if you're not nice, then you're just totally fucking disrespectful, like, it's ridiculous, thank you, I just got really nauseous. Mm -hmm. I'm really thirsty for some reason. Um, so yeah, um, Mayo Clinic, tomorrow I'm having my, um, lumbar puncture. And I asked them, um, because I was afraid Dr. Tobin was going to be doing it, so he's my neurologist. And, um, so I asked them who's going to be doing it, and they said the nurses, which, um, comforted me in a sense that Dr. Tobin's not going to be doing it, but I've never heard of nurses doing a lumbar puncture. Um, I've, like mom said, I've always heard of anesthesiologist or a doctor doing it, especially a neurologist. Or, you know, somebody of that nature. Um, I've never heard of nurses doing a lumbar puncture. I mean, but I 
I don't work in that type of medical field, so I, I don't know. But I've never heard of a nurse seeing it, so. But again, I would. Yeah, like she said, they must have special training to do it, so obviously. Um, otherwise, I guess they wouldn't be allowed to do it. She said a lot's changed in 23 years since she's been to college, so. But, I mean, so, maybe, but as long, and I, and I, I told, I even told the lady on the phone, I was like, I don't care who the hell does it, honestly, as long as Dr. Tobin doesn't come near me with a needle around my spine, I'm, I'm fine with it, honestly, um, at this point, <laughs> so. Um, I'm just, my biggest fear isn't even the needle going in my spine. My biggest fear is I have the worst of luck and I am really fearful of getting a headache afterwards. I know that it's like, I think it's like a 30% chance. I think or like a 20, 25% chance of getting one. Um, I mean, it's like a pretty low chance of getting one, but it's me, so, um, and with that cyst being there, I'm afraid I have too much spinal fluid, so, I don't know if they should, I don't, I don't know. I'm just afraid I'm going to get the headache, and I'm going to, I'm planning on doing most of the driving back home, um mom's eyesight isn't very good <laughs> as we have found out the past few days she's uh, made some uh, interesting turns lately um, luckily her glasses yeah before we left she went to go get her glasses and the whole point was um, before we before she sat there and waited and borrowed the money from grandma to get her glasses that day, you know, she asked them first, you know, am I going to be able to get them today? And they said, yes. Well, then she found out she needed bifocals and they're like, oh, well, no, because since you need bifocals, we can't get them done today. And she's like, well, I wish y'all would have told me that. Otherwise I wouldn't have been wasting my time here when I could have been packing for this trip that I'm supposed to be going on tonight and I wouldn't have went ahead and borrowed the money I would have waited um, so they actually won't be ready until probably a couple days after we get back and she really needs them really bad <laughs> worse than I need glasses <laughs> she can't <laughs> When we're driving, she's like lean forward to read the signs, and I'm like, it says da 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 da. I'm like, don't worry, we still got 15 miles until our next exit. She's like, oh, okay. So yeah, I and I'm used to driving anyways. So like, last year I drove all the way to Florida all the way back, and usually on road trips, um, unless somebody else wants to drive, usually. Usually when we go to Florida, Jeff drives, but like any other time when I'm with somebody else, um, I, I usually drive the whole way there and the whole way back just because I, I like to drive and I don't mind driving. Um, but, um, yeah, so I plan on driving the whole way home. Um, I just, like I said, I just really hope I don't get this headache. So, um, I guess we'll see. So, this would be my last video until tomorrow. Um, I'll have little videos, um, probably for tomorrow. Um, I don't know how I'm going to post them. Um, I'll probably stop somewhere with Wi-Fi because I have to save my mobile data for the navigation. Um, because I'm not sure exactly if we're going to go the same way home. 
Um, I got to look at construction and um, traffic and everything. Um, the quickest way home is through Chicago, but there's just a lot of tolls, and we're we're really really low on money. Um, so, um, but the way we went, there was a lot of back roads and everything. So, I'm gonna look at um, there was a third possibility. So I'm gonna look at that way and see if it's longer or shorter and everything. So, I'm gonna be looking at that and. Um, so I'm going to need my mobile data once, so to wrap that up, I'm going to need my mobile data for navigation. Um, so, and I don't have much left. So to upload the videos for, from the Mayo Clinic, I'm going to have to find, um, a place with Wi-Fi because like I said earlier, um, we're going to be checking out in the morning. Um, even though checkout time isn't until noon, we'll be at the Mayo Clinic. Um, from like 9.45 until we leave. So we're getting packed up tonight and getting ready to leave. And we're going to be leaving. We're going to be checking out about 9, 9.15 in the morning um, and leaving this fucking hotel from hell. Oh my God. This is the Super 8 um, Fairgrounds Rochester do not ever check in this hotel. There's another Super 8 down the road. They're both on Broadway. There's another Super 8 down the road. I don't know anything about it, but I wouldn't. I would spend, if you ever come to Rochester, if you have to come to the Mayo Clinic, which I wouldn't recommend this one. I would go to the one in Florida or Arizona. I wouldn't recommend this one just because of my personal experience. Um, like I said, everybody's nice. They're just ditzy as fuck. Um, I wouldn't recommend this one. But if you have to come this one, just because of the distance and everything, which, by the way, if you live where I live, um, Florida, the one in Florida, is the same distance as this one. The only reason why I came to this one is because they had an appointment a month quicker than the one in Florida. I should have waited the month. Yeah, I should have waited till April. Um, it was only going to be three extra weeks. I should have fucking waited the three extra weeks. It was going to be like three and a half weeks extra, I think. I should I should have waited. Um, anyways, if you do have to come to the Mayo Clinic, pay the extra money to stay in the hotel downtown. Um, they have the subway and the skyway to the Mayo Clinic so you don't even have to step a foot outside of the hotel to go to the Mayo Clinic. You can go to the subway and walk underground or you go to the Skyway, um, which we never found out. We, we never walked the Skyway. I think um, tomorrow I'm going to walk the Skyway just to, just to do it once before we leave, um, just for shits and giggles. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up and start packing while I can still use my legs and then mom's going to start taking stuff down to the car. Um, so like I said, I'm going to take videos tomorrow while we're at the Mayo Clinic and I'll try to find some Wi-Fi um, to um, post everything. Um, right now we're going to pack and make a list of everything. That's another thing, we have to make a list of everything that we are going to put in our review for this hotel because there are so many horrible things that we have to say about this hotel. Oh, one thing was mom was walking barefoot while she was cleaning up and, and packing some stuff up. She was walking barefoot and when she stepped onto the bathroom floor, she noticed there was something on her foot and luckily she didn't get a pedicure before we came. And her feet are kind of less up because there was a piece of fucking glass stuck to her foot. And that was just from her walking around the carpet. So, yeah. And then um, my clip fell um, underneath the bed. And it doesn't go all the way underneath the bed because it's, it's a platform bed, you know, of course. And there was a cat that looked like to a perfume bottle. I'm like, really? How did they miss that while they were cleaning? Like, it's just, 
This is such a horrible hotel. I've never stayed in such a horrible hotel. Don't ever stay here. Like I said, if you have to stay, if you have to go to this Mayo Clinic, pay the extra money, stay in the downtown hotels that are closer to the Mayo Clinic and in, in the downtown. Pay the extra money. It's totally worth it. Trust me. Uh, don't stay in the ones further away. Don't. Just, just don't. You'll save yourself a lot of headache. Um, so... I'm going to wrap this up, and good night, y'all, and um, I'll post some more videos tomorrow whenever I can.